We are 100% absolutely breaking boundaries here over on the Y1 series. This is the second player we're chronicling from this beautiful country, and I could not be more happier to bring you this video today. Let's go over the next episode in Why I Want, the show where we go over prospects in the 2022 NHL Entry Draft, guys who are eligible and who I think you should be thinking about as potential picks for your favorite hockey team. Last year, we talked about Aito Iguchi, and we highlighted how this guy came out of the suburbs of Japan, he rose to prominence via some viral YouTube videos, but he was playing his draft-eligible season in Japan, and it wasn't really the most well-off situation for him to be noticed by scouts and actually have his name out there. Today's video, though, is going over another Japanese prospect who, instead of playing in Japan, is actually in North America, and he's shown off a pretty good amount of talent, which has led to him being conversed about in some draft conversations this year. Let's head over to the Youngstown Phantoms in the USHL and talk about Kenta Isogai, a player who I really do think has a lot better of a chance to being drafted comparative to Aito Iguchi last year. A lot of that has to do with availability, a lot of that has to do with size, a lot of that has to do with what scouts are saying about this guy. Let's go over Kenta Isagai, his entire profile, and what you can expect out of this potential NHL prospect. So, Isagai, or I guess you could say Isagai-san, is playing out of the Youngstown Phantoms in the USHL. He's 17 years old, born on August 28, 2004. This makes him one of the youngest players in the entire NHL draft, as if he was born just about two weeks later, he would have been eligible for 2023, rather than 2022. He's 5'11", 154 pounds, as a left-handed forward. He played on the left wing, primarily for the Phantoms, and... You could already see that he's a lot bigger than Aito Iguchi was. Iguchi was listed at 5'3", which is fun for me, because I'm also 5'3", but it's not really the most projectable frame for somebody heading towards the National Hockey League. Kenta Isagai being 5'11", definitely helps him out in that respect. Now, you can look at the numbers and say, okay, this guy only had 22 points in 59 games played for the Phantoms in the USHL. That's really not all too great, isn't it? And I'll go out there and agree, the production by itself was not the best in the world, but it's how he was able to get those points, as well as the body of work he has had in the past, that I think is also worth highlighting. Before heading over to American Junior Hockey, he was playing for the Okanagan Hockey Club in Europe. This was a team competing in the Junior Austrian League. And playing for the U-20 squad, he had himself 35 points in 23 games played. Now, it was notable because, as we said, this is a junior league, it's for U-20 players. Kenta Isagai, as a 15-year-old, was the second highest point producer in the entire league. All these other guys were 19, 18 years old, some are 20 as well, so the fact that Isagai was right in here, by the way, he's the only Asian guy, amongst a group of all European players, it is somewhat noteworthy. He also had the highest U16 year ever out of anybody who has ever played in this league, so add that to the list of accomplishments for Kenta Isagai. He also played in the U18 version of this league earlier in that season in 2019-20 where he had 26 points in 15 games. Now, the all-time numbers for this one are not all too great in comparison. He had himself the 35th best 15-year-old year in this league. In fact, if you go over to the first overall spot, it's actually a name you might be familiar with. It's John J. Paterka who is currently in the Buffalo Sabres system. He also had Isagai suiting up for the Okanagan Club in different tournaments. He actually had himself the all-time best showcase ever at the EBITC U16 tournament, where in three games played, he put up 14 points. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about this one. He just went out there in a tournament against other European kids and dominated, and it's the number one showcase that that tournament has ever seen. Lego, why are you going over his previous tournament statistics and everything. You look at the points he had now, 22 points, 59 games played, that's not all too great, isn't it? Well, let's go over to some of the scouting reports to take a look at how he was able to get these points and why. You probably should be a little bit more optimistic about Isugai, despite the fact that his production might not have been all too great. On Elite Prospects, there are some users who have endorsed some of the skills that he has. Speed, acceleration, shooting accuracy, puck handling, and the offensive reads are all things that other users have certified. While he currently isn't ranked anywhere on the primary scouting outlets, Will Scouching actually has him ranked. You probably know Scouching, he does some very fantastic work with prospects and tracking and data and everything. He currently, on his most recent post on the blog, has Isagai ranked in the 69th spot. Now, that might be a meme, I'm not really too sure, but it is interesting 
interesting to note that he was ranked 34th in Will's December ranking, but he had dropped to 69 since then. This is the write-up he has on his blog. Kenta Isugai is part of a bright generation of Japanese players working through the ranks. Unfortunately, he hasn't had international experience for the Japanese team, and I would have loved him against Division 1A competition at the ongoing U18. But my USHL viewings will have to do. He's fast, skilled, loves to try things, and gets to the net with that speed and skill. He's undersized, but he brings huge energy and great defensive abilities down the middle. I'll have an eye on him closely over the years, but I think there's a lot of potential locked away if you look beyond his middling production. We also have a selection of game reports from Future Considerations on their website, so another link will be in the description if you want to go ahead and read these. This is the brief summary, well not really summary, it's kind of just the preview of one of the reports on a game against Madison. Isugai is a fantastic skater who can really fly with a good set of hands. His skating mechanics looked great. It looked effortless for him when skating in transition. With his quick hands and speed, he was able to be an effective puck carrier while attacking the offensive zone for his team. Isugai's edge work and ability to change direction makes him a tricky player to defend for the opposition. Another report written by Austin Broad says this, He is a speedy center whose game relies on puck possession. He's a great skater with high-end speed and acceleration that allows him to drive the transition game. When Isagai carries the puck up the ice at full speed, he's nearly impossible to defend in one-on-one -on -one situations. His puck skills and playmaking ability have improved a little throughout the season. One more from Austin Broad. He says that Isagai is the type of player that pushes the pace at both ends of the ice. His combination of speed and puck skills make him a lethal player with the puck on a stick. He attacks opposing defenses with the puck on a stick and puts them back on their heels because of the speed he generates with his strides through the neutral zone. Defensively, he can also close gaps and get back easily on the back check. And so, this is a player that really thrives off of pace, his puck possession play, and his awareness off the puck as well. This is what Mitch Brown said on Twitter, It's really interesting because he earned a better stat line than 10 goals and 12 assists in 59 games. He is a rare, draft-eligible prospect with three-zone impact. Mitch Brown's own analytical model has him at a 92 percentile, which I believe is a wins above replacement number, but either way, Mitch Brown says that Isagai has speed and he attacks the inside. Too often, he falls into the outrace everyone along the boards loop, cutting across the front of the defensive zone, changing pace, using the give and go will lead to better USHL results. The game moved in the right direction late this season. For reference, Shane Wright's card is also posted here on the same thread, and Mitch Brown has Shane Wright at a 99 overall percentile, so it's really interesting to me that Isagai has a 92 percentile number. All in all, though, Kenta Isagai is a player you really need to look beyond just the numbers to really get a track as to what it is that he does well on the ice. Go ahead and watch some of the tape, watch some of the USHL Phantoms games, and just take a look at this guy and the way he handles the puck at top speed. Take a look at what he does when he gets in stride and when he just starts galloping down the ice. Take a look at what he does in his own zone, too, when he goes out there and he makes good reads and he does what he needs to do to get involved on defensive transitions. He's not afraid to hold onto the puck while bringing it out of his own zone and into the offensive zone, and traits like these combined with his footwork, his speed, it really does project him into a guy that I could see getting at least somewhat of a flyer draft pick in this year's NHL draft. As Mitch Brown said, you probably need to expect more production, and that could be accomplished by doing a few more tweaks to his overall tendencies. But at the end of the day, if you're looking for projectable NHL talent, players that have skills that could translate to the NHL at the top level, Kenta Isagai is kind of trending in that direction, I feel, where if he gets taken in the 6th or 7th round, I wouldn't be all too surprised. This is a guy that is one of the younger players in the entire draft, so you have to remember, you could debate the idea that this player arguably has another year's worth of development against some of the guys who were born in October or November who are eligible for this draft too. And so, last year I was kind of upset because I knew, even though we made the Y1 video, in my heart I did not think that Aito Iguchi would be drafted. However, for Kenta Isagai, I do feel like there is a bigger chance for this guy to be drafted for sure. It comes down to size, it comes down to actual projectability, and it comes down to the fact that he played in North America, where some scouts, scouting Mitch Brown, some of the crew over there on Future Considerations, they actually did get a few good looks at this guy, and they said, yeah, this is a talented enough player to think about, potentially, at the NHL draft floor. So, talk to the comments all your thoughts about Kenta Isagai, what it is that makes him so special. If you've seen 
any Youngstown Phantom footage, any footage of Isagai from when he was younger. There is a whole bunch of clips on Twitter of things that he did in the Austrian League, but there are also highlights on YouTube you can find of Isagai with the Phantoms as well. Let me know your thoughts about this player and whether or not you want your team to draft him. I hope you enjoyed this Vitriage Trolls Line 9. And bye.